Let's look at choosing a public cloud provider for VMware workloads. My name is Travis Lawrence. I am a cloud solutions architect with Arrow. So back in 2017, Morgan Stanley did some financial analysis and found that public cloud was really at an inflection point. They estimated that 20% of all the workloads ran in public cloud at that time. And then they found that based on other technology adoption cycles, so if you think about notebooks or smartphones, x86 servers, those types of things, or even digital music and video games, that when you got to that 20% penetration point, that the growth curve would inflect and growth would accelerate. And that specifically over the next few years that we would learn whether cloud computing would settle into maturity by the end of that decade, which was 2020, or grow into what they call the once in a generation business opportunity. So the question really was what would happen with cloud? How, how big would that business get over time? And in that time, we've really seen that public cloud did grow into that generational business opportunity. So we see that at Arrow as a big opportunity for you as our partners. Now, if you look at the Flexera data here, it shows that today in 2021, we have reached the point where there's more workloads in public cloud than not. So 50% in the public cloud, with an additional 7% predicted in the next 12 months. And also we've learned that, you know, with 97% of organizations use at least one public cloud. So the data says that cloud is really the majority. And not only that, but that public cloud adoption continues to accelerate. So in that same Flexera survey, 90% of organizations said they expect a higher cloud usage than previously planned due to the pandemic. So, Kind of on top of that, Gardner predicts almost 25% compound annual growth rate for cloud services in the next three years, 21 to 2024. So, and Gartner specifically noted that the pandemic has val validated that cloud value proposition. So reinforcing the idea that cloud adoption is more the new normal rather than something that, you know, only kind of leading businesses are starting to utilize. Now, obviously, cloud growth may be evident to you. So many of you may be part of that growth that's happened over time. But, but it's really important that we're clear on that market opportunity and what is still ahead so we can plan for the near future and help those types of customers. So what does this all mean for you as partners? So you may say, you know, I know the cloud is growing, but moving, thing, moving everything to the cloud isn't that simple. And that though there's really a desire to move, organizations still kind of struggle with how do we get to the cloud? How do we make that happen? How do they determine which applications to move? Where do they start? And VMware shared some interesting data. So they found that only 40% of organizations are capable of driving digital transformation, and that 92% of those customers are turning to partners for help. So that's really the opportunity for you and for us together is to help customers determine when and how to utilize cloud. So if you're gonna be that trusted advisor, you need to be able to prescribe the right cloud platforms for your customers based on their workload and application requirements. And we wanna be able to help you monetize hybrid and multi-cloud in the many forms that it takes. So to be clear, when I'm talking about, you know, terminology here, defining hybrid cloud, I'm defining it here as a private cloud or on-premises data center with one or more public cloud services. Um, and separately, multi-cloud in this instance is really utilizing different public cloud providers in a single organization, not running applications across multiple clouds. So, I mean, there's different ways that people define that for this setting, that's what we're talking about. You can obviously run applications across clouds, but that's not what we're really covering here today. So tying this all back to the session here today, VMware on Public Cloud is really one of those tools that you can use to get customers to cloud. So how do we help our partners monetize and build solutions with multi-cloud and hybrid? And then where does VMware on Public Cloud fit into this? So as an Arrow partner, we continue to offer solutions for the enterprise data center as we always have. We also build many edge and IoT solutions that combine our global components or global IoT solutions business. So those can really be part of a broader offering with cloud. But our focus for cloud partners is really connecting you with the right mix of public cloud infrastructure as a service and platform as a service or software as a service offerings so you can help solve business problems for your customers no matter what the technology stack really requires. So say you have customers looking for guidance on migrating some of their key applications to the cloud. Um, we offer four primary hyperscalers. So we're talking Azure, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, and IBM Cloud from a native cloud services perspective. But then we can tie in VMware running on these cloud providers so you have more options for your customer workloads. 
Now for these hyperscaler offerings, we can transact on your behalf. So we can provide the certifications, the services, and even financing to jumpstart your cloud business. And then we can provide training and enablement for your teams to grow that cloud expertise. And, and all of this really comes together with our Aerosphere cloud platform. Um, it's a brokerage platform, so with cloud and SaaS offerings, we've really seen an explosion of software solutions. And if you as a reseller want to offer more of those solutions, complexity tends to increase over time. So, And this makes it really difficult to simply transact business, let alone keep all of your teams up to speed on all of these different technology offerings. So the question really becomes at that point, how do you keep up? Also, if you think about the transition businesses are making, they are trying to make the shift from that three-year pr procurement cycle with on-premises hardware to a hybrid model with cloud and SaaS solutions. So that changes how the customer buys. How do you help them make that shift from large pur purchases to monthly payments? And then how does your organization do the same thing? And I think finally, we're seeing the continued consumerization of technology. So consumer trends like buying digitally, buying from Amazon or streaming a movie from Netflix online have really influenced the way that customers wanna buy technology even in their business. They, they wanna be able to purchase directly through a site and shorten the time it takes to get those services. So in the channel, that can really mean less margin and fewer channels to sell through if you have those direct digital buyers or if you don't have a way to, to access them. And Aerosphere is really a way for you to manage all of these cloud products for your customers. So you get simplified quoting and integrated billing across cloud and SaaS services. And then you can leverage the business intelligence inside of Aerosphere to spot those different customer buying trends. And it really can also help you to drive sales by allowing customers to purchase directly through a customer facing marketplace where they can order directly. Now, along with Aerosphere, we can offer financing options through Aero Capital Solutions. So you have a way for your business or your customer's business to transition to a consumption based financial model. And we can also provide white labeled services to help you fill in gaps as you build out your cloud business. And then all of this really comes together. So we've got all these different routes that we could have to leverage Aerosphere, to leverage financing, to leverage services, to provide you with those different tools to help your customer on that journey to hybrid and or multi-cloud. So, and then the end goal here really is, so you become that strategic trusted advisor to solve their business problems with all of these different technology types. So whether it's leveraging public clouds for data protection or by moving workloads with VMware on public cloud. So again, our aim is to help you be a trusted advisor for your customers. And that means being able to prescribe the right solution, whether it's on-premises, whether it's a hybrid solution or a full cloud solution. But what does a successful cloud partner look like? So how do you evolve and capture that market opportunity? Number one, I think being aware of the hyperscaler opportunity we've been talking about and embracing it. So there's many ways to do that. And as we'll see in a bit, there's multiple ways to migrate an application to the cloud. And in each of those lies a business opportunity for you. So if you think about VMware on public cloud, that is part of that. It's one of the tools you can use to move an application without refactoring it. It's also important to have a hybrid and multi-cloud strategy. So that means you, this allows you to be a trusted advisor with multi-cloud or other type of ag location agnostic services. We don't have to be concerned, you know, we can prescribe what is best for the customer. Do they build on premises because they need to keep financial information safe? Or is it a hybrid type application that spans across on-premises and cloud? And that really lets you guide customers on each journey and understand the risks and the trade-offs and measure that and put the workloads in the right place for the best solution for the customer. I'd also say, you know, if we encourage all partners to move beyond that infrastructure focus and focus on business outcomes. I and mean, you've probably heard us at Arrow talk about that for a long time. We're understanding what that customer critical business issue is. Do you focus on healthcare and Epic? Or do you, how do you move beyond infrastructure as a service and specialize in certain workloads or certain use cases? Given the fact that large majority of cloud native applications are starting to use containers, I think the, the final one is really how do you target new buyers? Like if we're looking at developers or different business units that haven't traditionally purchased IT or technology, there's different ways that we can start to look at those different customers and access them. Now, there's not a single answer to cloud migration, as you can kind of see here. So if you walk away with one thing from this session, it should really be to think about how are you executing on your customer multi-cloud strategy. So then the VMware public cloud piece of that fits into this. So you may be thinking we're talking a lot about the market, um, or maybe that VMware on public cloud is a starting point for your organization. So how do we narrow down how we should move an application to the cloud? Or should it be even moved at all? 
classifying cloud migration strategies really started back in 2010. Gartner wrote an article about, you know, how do you, do you re-host an application? Do you refactor it? Do you revise it, rebuild, replace it? You know, a lot of R's. There's five different R's in that scenario. And we've seen, you know, multiple versions of this, but the basic premise is, you know, cloud is not a silver bullet. So we need to understand your value customers is moving the right workloads to cloud using the right method. So this cloud migration strategy is really a way to gauge what fits for a particular application. So some applications, things like costs or time or the risks associated makes it not worth refactoring, you know, rebuilding that entire application in a cloud native way or a more modern way. But it may make sense to repurchase. So meaning let's move that application into SaaS. You've probably seen that a lot with email or a lot of the office documents, O365. So we're basically taking what was on premises, an email server, and utilizing that as a service provided by Microsoft. Or maybe we rehost an application. So we lift and shift that application into the cloud without changes to that underlying operating system. And now we could have an entire session really on what each of these mean or how many hours there should be. But what I want to focus on is that the one that is simplest is VMware on public cloud. And that really fits into that relocate box. This is the least complex method for some of the workloads to move to public cloud. So it fits a lot of those applications and requires less effort if we're taking that virtual machine at the hypervisor level and being able to move that into a public cloud provider. So again, relocate is defined as hypervisor level lift and shift where we move virtual machines into the cloud without purchasing new hardware, we don't have to rewrite the application, or modifying the existing operations around that system. Now, VMware on public cloud is, what does it actually look like? So it is really software hosted on Azure, AWS, GCP, or IBM Cloud. So what customers are getting is the familiarity they have with some of those public cloud benefits with that VMware infrastructure. So you get the, the reliability and global infrastructure footprint of, of the big providers, but you get that familiar software component from VMware. Now, customers can leverage those software-defined data center technologies that they know, so meaning vSphere, vCenter, vSAN, lots of, a lot of Vs, but and NSX, all of those are delivered as a cloud service by those providers. And then there are different pricing options, so you'll see hourly or yearly pricing options. Um, but the idea around this is really rapid time to value. You can help your customers focus on running the application rather than the core VMware underlying infrastructure. So customers get the same performance and resilience they're used to having on premises with a familiar management interface. And what this means is virtual infrastructure admins can utilize their VMware skills while learning and connecting hyperscaler services as needed. Now, each of these cloud services vary a bit between the hyperscaler providers, so that VMware offering on top of them, but generally the hyperscalers manage the underlying hardware and VMware maintenance and all those parts and pieces, meaning things like updates or resolving a network failure and providing 24-7, 365 support. So that is an important piece though. To be that trusted advisor, we wanna be able to solve the business issues with the right technology. So if we can show customers how to grow into those public cloud services, we can say, hey, we'll bring your virtual machines with VMware, but you can also leverage things like Azure Blob Storage or Amazon S3. Or if you wanna get into more modern applications, Google Kubernetes engine, and then we can start to connect those within that same cloud environment, even though some are running on VMware and some are cloud native. So it's really a simple way for you to start customers thinking about moving into the cloud, or maybe even if they're more mature and they're starting to build public cloud applications, they have certain applications that they don't want to rebuild or refactor, they can lift those into the cloud with VMware. So why is this important? I mean, simply part of it is market opportunity. So VMware represents 76% of 4.3 billion worldwide market for software defined data center. And as of 2021, they claim 500,000 customers. So we're seeing a large market for this type of opportunity. There's millions of virtual machines out there and we're all kind of trying to address, you know, which ones move to the cloud and how do we do that? And then as we discussed, the majority of workloads are really moving to the cloud in one form or another. So if you are a partner looking to tap into a large customer base, there's a lot of opportunity here. And then that also lets you leverage that VMware ex expertise that you already have and help customers define what the best fit is for those new and existing workloads. It doesn't always have to be all in on public cloud, or is it an easy way to lift and shift with that VMware hypervisor sort of option? And now we'll talk about how Arrow can help you here shortly, but that is our goal. Again, this is one of the tools in your tool belt to 
help customers move into that cloud. So there's several use cases that align with customer cloud strategies in their journey really to adopt public cloud. So customers really generally fall into two categories. First, there are customers what I call cloud fit strategies, that they've been really invested in their on-premises data centers and aren't necessarily looking to move the majority of their workloads to the public cloud today, but they do see public cloud can give them unique benefits that are difficult to achieve in their on-premises data center. Um, disaster recovery is really a good example of that. So it's something that they can extend out, it's very easy to use or if they have the need for, let's say, on-demand capacity or, or the need for different geographical locations, if you leverage public cloud, those are great use cases that are, that are kind of simple to activate. Now, the value for those customers is really as a service, as you see on the left. So meaning simpler, a simpler offering using a VMware virtual machine, maybe as a target for storage or as a DR scenario they can spin up in the public cloud. Now, this, the second group is really what I'd call cloud first strategies. They've made a conscious decision to build new workloads in the cloud and then to migrate some of those on-premises apps into the cloud as well. So the pace at which each of those customers kind of migrates into that cloud environment is different or how fast they move those applications. But that decision-making process being driven from, you know, this is our cloud first opportunity is really a way for them to take advantage of cloud services like machine learning or like IoT or data analytics. And then they can modernize those applications more quickly. So those customers care about different things. These, the second group of customers cares about the portability and seamless migration capabilities of VMware. So even though they may be building some cloud native applications, there are other applications that it would be easier for them to lift into the cloud again at that hypervisor level. Um, and then along with the ability to connect or transform those workloads into modern applications, see again on that other side, they can say, hey, let's use containers. Um, let's use that in the public cloud. And that gives them options. You know, you could say that could be VMware Tanzu, or we could use something like Google Kubernetes Engine or Azure Kubernetes Service. And it's, it's that choice that is provided along the way. We're not going to have one size fits all for all these different types of applications when we move them into the cloud. With this, with all these being virtual machines and all the related technologies that VMware has built around those, there are many different customer types that can use VMware in public cloud. But I think there, here, as we can see, there's some specific indicators that will help to prioritize prospects for you or to identify you know, high potential targets who is actually going to use this type of service. So you can simplify discovery by asking general questions like, how many vSphere licenses do you have? So the more vSphere license that a particular customer has, the more likely, you know, they're already invested in VMware and the more likely they are to leverage VMware in the public cloud. Now, current VMware product usage is also important. So again, many of these offerings use vSAN for storage or NSX for networking on the public cloud side. So either customer knowledge of those technologies or your expertise is helpful in those solutions. And again, those hyperscalers set them up and maintain the base level, but understanding how to use them is, is an important piece. And then I think the three bottom arrows are, are pretty key here as well. So again, if you think about state of cloud adoption or cloud preference drivers, if you look at those, they show the more that a customer is working towards that cloud first methodology, meaning they've already, they may have already migrated many workloads and are, are more innovative, or the less, the less likely they are to, to need VMware on public cloud, at least for the majority of their workloads. They're not as focused on lift and shift. They're taking those core business applications and refactoring them or using SaaS. But there are also may be some opportunities there. It's, it, like if they're looking to simply reduce their on-premises data center footprint, um, then, then you have different types of options there. So, or if they're planning that migration and they have a short runway to get to cloud, say, you know, we have an initiative at the business level to do this all in six months, well, maybe lifting some of those virtual machines into the cloud as a first step is an easy way to hit that objective without having to, to put in the effort to rebuild or refactor some of those different pieces. So now, how do we help customers select which VMware on public cloud provider to use? As you can see, there's a, there's a myriad of different options here. And again, this always depends on that customer and business need. So we can't be really prescriptive in a session like this. I mean, we could spend the next hour talking through different scenarios. We won't do that here, obviously, but that is where you can reach out to our Arrow team. Hey, we've got this customer that has this problem. Is this a good fit for 
Azure, or is this a good fit for Azure VMware solution where we move VMs at the VMware level? So there's, there's those scenarios that we can work through. But we have already touched on some of those use cases and customer types. So generally, I think we can think about this as, you know, again, is this a cloud fit or cloud first customer? Um, we can also think about which public cloud services have the most value for each customer. So are they going to connect their VMware workloads to one of those different types of services? Or is this more of, hey, we want to get this out of our data center and just continue to manage it as we have? Um, or we can also, again, think, or is there a simpler disaster recovery or data center extension story that we can use where the customer needs a cloud platform that's the same as their on-premises VMware environment? And then it's, then it's not as much, at least initially, about those public cloud services as about that location and availability of those different types of solutions. Now, there are a few things I want to highlight here. Again, I don't want to go through this in great detail, but as you consider a customer business as you think about what types of on-premises VMware products they're leveraging today. Are they already using vSAN and NSX, or do they need a more custom configuration? Um, Azure VMware Solution, VMware Cloud on AWS and Google Cloud, VMware Engine have more pre-built offerings with vSAN and NSX built in, whereas an IBM offers a more custom offering. Do you need a smaller number of hosts, or do you need to scale your, your cluster really large? There's different prescriptive ways we can look through that once we talk and understand that customer business need. So how large of a, large of a VMware environment does the customer need? Or how are they going to grow into that? Again, that, it's very important to understand what their business need. Is this a temporary way for them to move VMs, or is this a long-term solution? So each hyperscaler has a different minimum and maximum cluster sizes. You can kind of see here. It's something where we have to kind of work through that and evaluate that process. Um, again, some other questions that kind of come to mind. How quickly does an environment need to be deployed? Now, typically, I would say with these VMware cloud offerings, we see these environments as more static than, say, a modern cloud application, where we're going to spin up and spin up down containers. So we've got, again, we've got our vSphere base as the layer for, for all those different multiple apps. So deployment time may be less important in a lot of those scenarios. We may say, hey, we're going to deploy this, we're going to spin it up once, and we're going to use it for years. But we do may see some other scenarios where, say, test environments. We want to spin up a VMware test environment. We don't want to maintain it and have the hardware on premises. That could be a key factor if we can spin it up in an hour. Um, there are some unique use cases that we would evaluate, again, across these different hyperscalers. And then I think it is important to show price. And obviously, this is MSRP. We don't get into that in too much detail, but that is always a consideration. So understanding the difference in each offering, again, different types of, of hardware, memory, CPU, all those different types of things, but that can make or break a deal. And trying to understand the nuances are where we Arrow, can really help your teams understand that. So ultimately, the way we map the right VMware plus certain hyperscaler solution is by asking the right discovery questions and then focusing on key factors and connecting your teams with our Aero Cloud team to provide that training and support. And when I said key factors, we divide that into sort of two different categories. So one is what you provide to the customer, and then two is what we as Aero can help really to support you, our partner. So when talking with the customer, understand we need to understand what that business problem and related use case are. We've talked about that a little bit. And then we need to determine what those public cloud requirements are. And by that, I mean, is it simply data center extension or DR, where we need a virtual machine target somewhere else? Or are we really trying to modernize that and change the way an application runs and use a service that's specific to Google Cloud Platform or to IBM Cloud or to Azure? where we're going to tie into something new with that virtual machine, those requirements can have different outcomes as part of that. Now, as an Arrow partner on the right side, you can, you can, we're really here to help you grow your cloud practice. So we know that it's difficult to maintain relationships and those types of things, partner levels, certification levels with lots of different technology companies. So you have to pick and choose really where you invest your sales and technical resources. So that's where we can help. We can help enable your sales and technical teams as we have with our heritage tech technologies. But more importantly, for the hyperscalers, we can actually hold certifications and transact on your behalf. So this allows you to focus your teams on maybe certain hyperscalers and still capture business across multiple clouds and be able to maintain that customer relationship. You really get to say yes more often if a customer is really honed in on a specific cloud offering. Even if you don't have that skill set, you can leverage our teams to, we can actually transact on your behalf, we can help with billing, we can help with services, kind of the things I mentioned in the, in the Aerosphere section earlier, to really round out your 
cloud business as you bring it online. So say you've built out a growing Azure practice with sales and technical and post-sales services, you're, you're good there, but then the customer wants to leverage Google Cloud Platform for a specific offering. They're set on that, there's a certain public cloud piece that, that they really wanna use. So their Arrow can transact and manage that GCP business and then provide the related professional services and have that all flow through you as our reseller partner. So, I mean, really the bottom line is here, we wanna help you with your cloud business. We're flexible, whether that's helping you to meet partner level objectives those certification levels and, and whatnot, or, and, and when we think about, again, pulling that back to VMware and public cloud, that is one of the, oftentimes, the ways we can turn into broader conversations. So maybe we're talking to a customer that really has a lot of VMware workloads that are wondering how they can get them into, into the cloud. VMware on public cloud is a piece of that, but it can also really be an on-ramp to general cloud of how do we use VMs in Azure or GCP or what other offerings are out there. And, and we're here to help you have those conversations there as well. Wrapping this up, I mean, what happens next? If you have customers that you think that this would resonate with, the VMware on public cloud story, or if you have a VMware or cloud practice and are looking to talk with customers about how and where VMware fits on public cloud, that's where you can connect with our Aero team. That's our first ask is reach out to us. We can talk to you about your business and understand where you're at, what type of customers you have, where you kind of need to fill in those gaps. And then we can start to focus in on what resources we can provide and how we can work together. And then I would say second there is we also have more focused resources at the technical level and sales level around you know, each hyperscaler's VMware solution. So more detail on what specifically is Azure VMware solution. Talking with our architects on what the use cases are and how we build around that. What are those public cloud services we can tie in there? Also, or what is Google Cloud VMware Engine? What is IBM Cloud for VMware solutions? All those different pieces, that's the next step. We wanted, in this session, it was really to talk about the overall use case and cloud market. And then once we say, hey, yes, I understand the value proposition here. I understand what customers I would target. And then how it ties into a broader cloud conversation. That is where we can start to gain traction with customers and, and help you as our partners. So overall, thanks for joining me today. Let's have that conversation around your cloud business and understand you know, how can VMware and public cloud fit into that. Thanks for joining me.